make a mama boss lady behind fiber and fox and if you're new here because you probably will be um, a lot of people are going to be jumping on these videos welcome i'll tell you a little bit about myself in a second um and if you've been with me all along welcome back i'm in the car it means we're vlogging but first off um everything you need to know about me is linked down below if you want to find me um ravelry etsy blog the like i'm a crochet designer um I also knit a little bit. I have a podcast here on YouTube. It's about every other week and also um, some tutorials and other maker mama boss lady tips. I'm a stay at home toddler mom and I crochet awesome stuff. Um, modern and vibrant <laughs> crochet. Uh, a lot of times with indie dyed yarn and just trying to not make it compete, but kind of because I'm a competitive person, make crochet um, compete or be held at a level of respect. Um, up with knitting. So that's kind of my spiel. Um, and yeah, I'm fiber.and.fox on Instagram if you want to find me and then any other links you need down below. Thank you for popping over here if you're new and uh, I hope you find something you like and stick around. But anyway, we're in the car today because we are vlogging. Uh, this one is going to be probably a little different. Uh, this is going to be a video in a series. And this is the first one that I'm filming, so I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to lay out that series just yet. Um, as of right now, it is June 12th. Uh, it's actually Worldwide Knit in Public and Crochet. Where's the crochet? In Public Day. Um, but I think you're going to be seeing these videos in August or definitely later in the summer. So I'm going to be visiting um, all of the shops along the I-91, Interstate 91. Um, they do a shop hop, so it's kind of like a yarn crawl. Uh, it takes place in August, I believe the 10th to the 21st this year, 2021. The dates have changed over time. Um, but they've asked a couple different audio and video podcasters to stop by each of the nine shops and kind of do a little tour and interview and just either give you a little preview of what you can be expecting for the shop hop if you're going to be in the area and uh, going from Connecticut to Vermont. Um, and if you're not, you can virtually join us. A lot of the shops are going to have online presences as well. Um, so yeah, I'm here to take you along on that journey. Today, like I said, I'm going, I'm going to two shops today. Um, we're going to be going to Massachusetts, um, Northampton area. I'm going to be going to Webb's Yarn, which they have a major online presence, yarn.com. You probably have heard of Webb's, uh, even if you're probably even outside of the U.S., but definitely outside of this area. Webb's is pretty big and pretty well known and has been around for forever. Um, so I'm going to Webb's and I'm also going to Northampton Wools, which is a couple feet outside of Webb's. It's a smaller like LYS feel um, where Webb's is a much larger retailer but has like all sorts of things. So um, I believe this video will end up being split into two. Um, I haven't, like I said, quite decided how I'm going to run this yet, um, but lengthwise I'll probably split um, all of them into two. But because the um, interstate runs from New Haven, Connecticut, all the way up to, I believe, Putney, Vermont is the furthest one. Um, I'm probably going to be grouping things together because um, I'm kind of in the middle of that. So it's a couple like hour or so in each direction. Um, so I'm going to group ones that are close together um, into one day. So I'm going to be bringing my mom along with me today and we're going to be going to Massachusetts and stopping by Webbs and NoHo Wolves. Uh, and I'm going to be interviewing, like I said, this is the first one that I'm doing. You're probably seeing it somewhere in the middle because this actually falls in the middle of the interstate journey. Um, but I'm going to be doing a little interview with some of the staff or owners and then just taking you along inside the shops. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I've done a couple like um, local to me yarn store, like yarn store day um, vlogs, but I've never done uh, like a sit down interview with anybody. So this is new and very exciting, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but very excited to give it a shot and thank you for coming. Um, and if you are joining us for the shop hop, um, I won't be there for that because I'm going to be doing this now, but thanks for coming and thanks for supporting local yarn stores and local businesses and getting out in the community and keeping that yarn economy going. Um, and if you're not local to the Connecticut type area, you can jump online and follow these folks on Instagram and still give them love and support. So with that said, Let's get road tripping! So 
here we are. We're at Northampton Wools, right? That's right. All right. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your shop and history and really whatever you want to tell me about your Sure. My name is Linda Daniels, and I have owned Northampton Wools since 1988. Okay. Um, it opened in 1981, and I first started working at Northampton Wools in 1982. I started by, by teaching. Okay, so you're the from beginning. the beginning. Right, from the beginning. I started teaching here first, and... Within a matter of weeks, um, the original owner, whose name was Jacqueline Severini, asked if I could work part-time as well. And um, it sort of grew, grew from there. Um, in 1988, I was able to buy the store, which is a whole other story in itself, sure. but it, it ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me. And we've never looked back, and it's been a great success and a great passion of mine and led me to things that I never dreamed would be possible. I've written a book. I've wow. had sweaters in a movie, in several movies, okay. actually. Yeah, I've taken um, knitting groups on tours. We went to one of the first um, Edinburgh yarn festivals oh, together wow. and a couple of trips to Ireland. So it's been a real, real blessing. Yeah, it um, sounds like me. you've had quite the journey. We have had quite the journey, yes. Staff-wise, is it just you? Do you have a team? Or? It's mostly me, but I do have a team um, that has changed over the years. People come and go, but right now I have two part-timers and one part-timer that is like my right hand. So she is really helping me through all of the um, next level steps of being a shop in the 21st century versus... The 20th century. I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes over there, the time you've been here. I was thinking about that this morning, actually. There have been immense changes in the industry um, since we first started. Yeah. And it really is um, all related to the internet, really. The mm -hmm. ability to communicate with each other and share. Um, you know, it used to take such a long time um, for a new technique or a new design even to filter its way through the normal channels and yeah. now we have it all instantly and um, it's just amazing how a craft or a skill or an art form, no matter what you want to call it, um, that's been around for such a long time can still be fresh and new and we can still find a yeah, new way to sure. do it. Yeah, it's it, it's different for me because I kind of came into the scene like right when Ravelry was born, like I right? was one of the original, you need like a password to get in kind of people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I can't imagine being a yarn shop without like that online community and like being able to look up a stitch online or that's yeah, very it's, different. It's very, very different because when Ravelry first began, um, kind of a baby, there was a lot of resistance um, from shop owners because it, it has slowly but really changed how we do that kind of, mm -hmm. that side of our business. We used to get paper, paper patterns and... Yeah from the designers and from the yarn companies, and it was hard to let go of that, hard just to see how Ravelry would fit into the shop. Now, we look at Ravelry almost every day. Right, so um, is there anything in the shop that you like specialize in or something that's exclusive to you guys? Are you kind of everything? Or? Um, no, no, not everything is exclusive to us, but we do try to um, pull in some things that are not, let's say, mainstream. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of small farms um, that some people might recognize. We carry Periwinkle Sheep, who's a hand dyer from Albany. We carry Bobolink Yarns, which is a Katie up in Vermont, collects the wool from several local farmers and has it turned into um, yarn and then dyes it. Feeder Book Farms from down in Maryland has become bigger and bigger and more well-known. And we are about to um, embark on an adventure with a brand new um, again, sheep farmer who has inherited or collected or stumbled upon 600 pounds of fleece that she's having turned into yarn and is um, dyeing all of that. So we will have some of her stuff in here. And she's from very close by from Huntington. So oh, we try to concentrate on some of the small things like that. And then having written a book, I've done a lot of designing um, I was uh, one of the main designers for Frog Tree Yarns before they went out of business. I've done some work for Plymouth Yarns. So the things that I've done there are specialty kinds of things as well. What is this book that you've written? <laughs> so it is, actually I just looked at it too. It's the, If you want to grab it, go yeah, for it. Yeah, I will. 
It is the Northampton Wool's Knitting oh, Book, okay. which basically um, is a collection of some of, some of our shop patterns. Um, from it, and it, it's been around for a while, but um, this was one of the really popular oversized kind of Guernseys that were was really um, well knit. And we've got some baby mm. stuff and some small hats and cardigans. This are you the sole designer popular. of all the pieces? Yeah. Wow. And then all of the models are local people. That's yeah. fantastic. We're part of Northampton. There's a little bit about Northampton and the history of it. And this one, actually, this rib vest was one of the sweaters that I did for the movie Cider House Rules. Um, so that one is in there. And then there's another um, pink one, if I can find it right away. This one. This one was also in Cider House Rules. Charlize Theron wore that sweater. Um, so... Is there going to be anything you're going to be offering in particular for the shop? I, it's a little in advance. We're filming in June. Yes. But. Yeah, we will be doing, I mean, usually during the shop hop, this, um, the, all of the stores are able to coordinate and we try to put, pick a theme and then most of us design something that okay. fits that theme. This year, we're not doing that because it was very last minute that we decided it was going to be able to um, happen mm -hmm. this year. We were sort of on the fence for quite a while. So we're really kind of putting it together this year as simply as possible. So each store will probably feature some sort of kit, but they won't necessarily be related. Okay. So we'll probably end up um, picking one of our favorite smaller companies and doing some little um, design to go along with it, whether it's a hat okay. or a shawl or a cowl or something like that. But there will be a featured item for the shop hop because that's always fun. I haven't done the shop hop in the past, so this is all new to me too. Uh, it's a fun, fun day. I'm really um, pleased with what we've done so far and really happy with people's responses to it. They really like it visiting each of the, sh of the stores. It's, it's a really fun idea with the little passport and everything. Yeah. It's a nice little yeah. souvenir. Yeah. Um, obviously you're a knitter. Uh, do you do any other fiber arts as well? I do crochet okay. and I've taught crochet up at a little adult education school here in town called the Hill Institute. Um, and I actually was a crocheter before I was a knitter. So okay. it's a long time kind of skill that I have, um, carried through. So when I want something quick and fast and fun, and that's the other big change too, is crochet has come such a long way yeah. to thanks to designers like you who, um, are going beyond just the regular granny square kind of. Yeah, <laughs> we're modernizing it just a little bit. Yeah, Granny squares are awesome too, but... Yeah, they have their place, yes. but it's nice to see different things. Definitely, and, and I always get really well. excited when I find a local yarn store that features crochet or has mm -hmm. samples, because I'm like, you get it. Yeah, exactly. You should look in our... Um, one of our display windows has a hexagon sweater in there. Yeah, and even crochet. just coming in, you had a sample rack outside of some sale stuff, and I was yeah. like, I see crochet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. Good. Yeah, we try to make an appeal to everybody. So. That's Yeah, that's awesome. Do you guys, it obviously looks like a lot of wooly wool and you said you work with farms, but do you kind of balance of superwash, non-superwash? Absolutely. Or? Yeah, absolutely. We try to um, go with what our customers really want. And superwash mm -hmm. is something that people have been looking for for quite a while now. And so some of the smaller farms are not doing superwashes, yeah. but that fills that need as, um, for people as well. Do you carry any big names as far as like indie dyers or anything? So are you talking about like Madeline Tosh? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, we have some Madeline Tosh. Um, we do Malbrigo. Okay, yeah. Yes, so things, so the staples. Yeah, you know, the ones everybody loves. Yeah, and we do classes. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, yeah, so yeah. We're in a nice little downstairs space. I'll take you guys on a tour. Mm -hmm. You may have already seen it. I'm not sure how I'm going to lay out this video. But um, <laughs> there will be a tour of the upstairs. They have a nice little downstairs class space. Um, and yeah, I wanted to ask what was on your needles at your hook right now. Um, or your spinning wheel or whatever else you get your hands yeah, on. Yeah, and that's upstairs, so maybe I can show you that sure. when we go upstairs. But um, I am and I am and I have to be one of those knitters who has many projects going on at the same time. Um, because I'm always trying to work a balance of um, the custom work that I have to do, and I do a lot of custom pieces and the shop models that need to be done. And then the things that I want to have done for myself. Um, otherwise yeah. <laughs> I'm never in a knit 
item if I don't take mm -hmm. some time um, to make something for myself. So right now upstairs, and I will not pronounce this right, but, but I have a design by Caitlin Hunter, the okay. Talvinin, I think it is, with birds around. I, the I know that one. So I'll show you that one. Though. I just finished a five-hour baby sweater last night for a, a customer who's looking for a baby sweater. And um, also on the needles at home, I'm making the second of the um, temperance shawl that Mel Brigo did a knit along for, and that's also a custom piece. So Do a lot of people wander in and be like, can you make me a... It's amazing the number of huh. people that come in and require, that either don't knit or are knitters but don't want to make that thing but want that thing. Yeah. <laughs> like this, the temperance shawl, this one particular person did not want to make it herself but really loved the design and... and is willing to pay somebody else to make it for her. You gotta do that sometimes. <laughs> we do that and we also do a lot of finishing. I have a lot of people that love the knitting process and not the sewing together. Yeah, that's not my passion either, mm -hmm. but we get it done. So we offer that service as well. It's really nice. Do you, do you do all of the shop samples yourself or do you guys have like No, some? actually I have a, um, it's very sweet. My very best friend from seventh grade um, helps with some of that knitting. So I can send her anything that I want knit and um, she's so fast. Within a couple of weeks, we have it back in That's the store. Fabulous. So when I want something really fast, I can depend on her. And then one of my part-time employees um, is a shawl addict, shall we say, <laughs> and um, is constant. Again, she probably has three or four shawls at least on the needles at a time. And every time she finishes one, she brings it in. We hang it up. Because awesome she loves to you. knit them, she never wears them. So she never we, takes them back. She you never. Oh them no, there. she does take them back. Okay. She does. She does. But yeah, so we're very fortunate to have those both of those people helping out. Yeah, that's nice because that's a lot of work on your own, especially if you want to make your own stuff too. Yes. Um, in, I'm assuming you have an online presence. Of we some do. Kind. Do you have a shop online? We do. Um, at the one of the things that has come out of the shutdown and COVID was that we did um, go from just having an information website to mm -hmm. having a website that you can purchase from. And that got us through this year. And we are now in at the point where we are about to um, go to a POS system and oh, yeah. create a whole new website again. So oh, we're nice. working on that. And our goal is hopefully by September to have that up and running. In the meantime, the Northampton Wool's website works, and you can see a lot. We don't have everything on it, but we do have a lot of our things up there, so you, you can purchase from there. Okay, and yeah, I'll have all the stuff linked down below as far as where you can find them. And are you on Instagram, social media, anywhere? We are on Instagram. Platforms? It's Noho Wool's on Instagram, and um, Northampton Wool's on Facebook. Okay. Um, we don't do Twitter. But we do both of those. Do you do any of your classes virtually online over Zoom or anything? I have done some virtual classes. Um, I haven't done a lot of them, um, mainly because I can't figure out what time to do it. Doing it in the store means having somebody else here to run the store yeah. while I'm doing a class, and that's been difficult. And then doing it at home just makes my day so long that. Um, it's very tiring. So we haven't concentrated too much on Zoom classes, but we may be able to add those as we get the website up and going. Mm -hmm. But in, by September, we'll be back in person as well. Okay. Yeah, that's really good to know. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? That was kind of my question list, but anything else you want to tell me about your shop? Uh, let's see. Well, we've been here for a long time, and I pride myself on the um, service that we're able to give our customers and hopefully keep them knitting and happy. And we do a lot of on-site help. If you get stuck, if you have a problem, you are usually welcome to just come on in. Um, we did have to ask people to call before, but now things are open enough so that it's pretty comfortable to come to town and just walk in. And um, we will find some time to get you going again. And that's what we really are about. We really feel strongly about keeping people knitting yeah. With whatever they're doing. What's the scariest thing you ever had to fix? Like, I actually have it upstairs. Oh, it's up there. <laughs> okay. No, there is one. There was one even scarier than that. But I have a, um, a a wonderful customer who I've known for a very long time. Came in with a sweater that he had run over with his lawnmower, 
And how's that happen? <laughs> and asked me to make it so that he could still wear it. He basically cut the sleeves, just destroyed the sleeves. So we had a big job just grabbing putting something that back together. On there? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Wow, that was not the answer I was looking for. <laughs> okay, you probably win that question then. All right, well, thank you so much for sitting down with me, and I'm looking forward to walking around the shop and checking out all the cute little samples and stuff, and hope you guys enjoyed this little... Great. Look into Northampton Wolves. Thank you so much for being here. One of the things that's been really popular this entire year is this little shawl. It's the Easy Goes It pattern um, by Finicky Creations. But this is what it looks like when it's knit up. And it takes three skeins of the Edition 3, which is a 100% wool from um, Schopel. We get it from Scassell designs and it is a self-striping one of the original mm -hmm. self-striping um bowls. it's the sister or brother or um fat aunt whatever you want to call it <laughs> to um the uh crazy balls the sour balls the sour mm -hmm. balls and um this has really been popular like i said it takes three skeins the pattern is available on ravelry and we have had it done in just about every single color. We happen to have two models right now, but we have done it in just about everything. And I should say that woman over there has done it in everything. That is Decker and she is one of our class teachers and knitting helpers. And right now she's actually knitting on a little shawl that I designed for this particular cotton, lightweight cotton. Ooh. And that's really pretty. But that's sold out right away, so we don't even have that here in the store anymore. We carry a lot of Plymouth. And this is one of the shawl patterns that I designed for Plymouth Yarns. It's probably one of their really popular um, things. You can, again, get this on Ravelry. I think you might have to buy it through a store, um, but it is up there, and it's done in their self-striping pendenza, and that comes in a lot of different colors um, as well. Is that and like a, a bamboo or it's something? It's a cotton. It's a mercerized cotton. Okay. It's a sheen that you get, but this has also been very popular in the store. And that takes three skeins of their yarn. And this is the Rios that we have two big boxes of sitting on the floor that we have not yet inventoried and stocked, but we are about to do that this next week. So we love, love, love this yarn. It is so soft. And in that yarn, our newest model for that is the powder wrap from Casa Pinka, which is a huge shawl. Oh yeah. Really a lot of texture in there. A lot of texture, a lot of fun, but easy stitch patterns and this is one of those shawls that you really will want to wrap and probably tie or um, use one of those leather cuffs that mm -hmm. are now really popular and then we Ooh. are a quince stockist Ooh. so we have right now we have the owl and the puffin and in the fall we'll have a bigger selection of their yarns as well and the, one of the new yarns that we are carrying um, this year, we've had her for a few months, I think I got her in the fall, is Emma's yarn. Oh. And she's from Florida. You probably know or have heard of I have her. heard of, not worked with, but she heard of. She is a um, teenager, probably still a teenager. She's been around for a couple of years, and I think she started the company when she was about 15. So she's on the cusp. You go, of Emma. Yes, she and her family now are involved in the business. And I just love the brightness of her colors, the kind of like fresh look. And this is Jillian Kittles, and she's from Rhode Island. Yes. She's popping up all over the place too. So she's really doing a good job of building her business. So we do have hers. And there's a whole nother shipment. I think Jill said I'll be getting that in the middle of July. So it will probably be here in time for the shop top. All of the colors that she does in her um, DK weight as well. I had heard of her and I had tried to look it up. I thought her name was Jillian, like Lillian. <laughs> Jillian Kittle. So it took me a while to find. Jillian oh, I found her. Yeah. <laughs> and when people were saying it, I thought it was Jillian. I was like, yeah. oh, that's a fun name. <laughs> yeah. And this is the Feederbrook. I don't know if you know, have heard of Feederbrook Farms. 
Um, everybody's heard of Spin Cycle and how hard it is to get. And Feederbrook came along and um, she is doing colors and yarn that's very similar yeah. um, to the Spin Cycle. A little less expensive and much more uh much faster for us as shop owners to get. So this is a pattern that I wrote for a, a, an attached cowl.
all video. Um, I'm in a different car now. Left my husband with the car at the car seat. My mom is sitting under a tree worldwide knitting in public. Um, <laughs> I wanted to show you what I got. So at Northampton Wools, I got... How can you say no to this? Look at that. Um, so this is Harvest Fingering Wheat Extra Fine Merino um, dyed by Earth Yarns. Um, and they, I believe all of their yarns are naturally dyed. Um, and this is dyed with buckthorn and they have cute little graphics on their uh, tags with like what the, I didn't know what this plant was, but the, the yarn itself, there's a tag uh, that says buckthorn. Sorry, lighting in the car. I know it's not ideal, but it's buckthorn. Um, and Earth Yarn plants a tree in Africa for each skein sold in par partnership with trees for the future, of the future, um, and recycled paper tags. So they, they clearly got a eco thing going. I've never worked with them before. Um, it is a fingering weight. It kind of, uh, the yardage is doo -doo 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 -doo, something, 435, so a, a thicker fingering weight leaning towards sport. Um, I got, <laughs> I kind of bought two different yarns for the same project. So I'll probably be making two tank tops, but going on vacation this summer, I wanted to have some simple, um, either knit or crochet, uh, tank top projects. I don't have a lot in my summer wardrobe. Um, this is for, this is the Fan Deco tee. This is one of my designs in case anybody was wondering in the video, you can find it in my shops. Um, but yeah, so I got two skeins of this and it's just this beautiful yellow turmeric -y, dyed with buckthorn. Natural dyeing is so fascinating to me. So that's what I got at Northampton Wools. And then they also had a stack of Vogue Knitting Magazines, different back issues, um, free with purchase. So I grabbed this one. I don't know if there's anything in particular that I'd make in here. I'm not usually a magazine person, but this is a holiday 2019 edition. I don't like the sweater on the front. Fun stuff in here. I'm, I'm, I don't think I've ever knit something out of a magazine. I kind of got into the knitting and the crocheting, like I was saying, um, that's the birth of Ravelry. So when I actually started following patterns, they were pretty much online. Um, so that's what I got at Northampton Wools. I hope that you enjoyed that little visit there. Um, and I believe this video will be a, a two-parter. Uh, so the Massachusetts ones on the I-91. keep saying 95. I-91. Um, so we did both of the mass ones today. So upcoming will be a trip to Webs as well. So stay tuned for that video. And thanks for coming along with me. Happy shop hopping. Bye.